Okay, so get this. A Timothy Chalamet look-alike contest. Right. Sounds fun, right? Mm-hmm. But then yeah. Timothy Chalamet himself shows up. Oh. It all went down in Washington Square Park in New York City. Oh, wow. A crowd of Chalamet doppelgangers, <laughs> all dressed up, costumes, excitement. <laughs> we're we're diving into this story today because, well, yeah. who doesn't love a good dose of celebrity surprise? Oh, right. Mixed with some, like, lighthearted fun. Oh, sure. Plus, it touches on fandom, social media virality, mm -hmm. and a dash of activism. Oh, wow. A lot to unpack here. Definitely. Our source material for this deep dive is a news article Okay. that describes this just wild scene. Gotcha. So we had these Chalamet doppelgangers, like I said, all dressed up, yeah. ready to compete. Uh -huh. The energy is high. Costumes are elaborate. I read. And then, boom, Timothy Chalamet shows up. That's amazing. What a twist. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I think one of the things that really stood out to me in this article was just the dedication of these fans. Yeah. Like we're talking people traveling from all over, yeah. putting in the time, the effort mm. to create these incredibly detailed costumes. For sure. What do you think about that? I mean, it's it's fascinating, right? Like, yeah. it speaks to this level of commitment that fans have yeah. and how readily they embrace these opportunities yes. for creative expression and connection. Oh, incredible. Um, and there's this one contestant that the article highlights. Yeah. His name is Vincent Panetta. Okay. And he drove all the way from Vermont with a peach. A peach? Yes, a peach. Wow. Just to, like perfectly recreate that iconic scene I love that from Call Me By Your Name yeah I mean yeah. that level of commitment is it's amazing amazing right yeah, yeah. it speaks to like the power of fandom absolutely this yeah. desire to embody yeah a character so, even yeah. just for like a few moments yeah it's pretty cool yeah it's really cool it's about connecting with something larger than yourself right yeah finding a community expressing your admiration totally in a creative and sometimes, let's face it, slightly absurd way. You know, speaking of absurd. Yeah. This event had its fair share of that. Oh, really? So get this. The NYPD actually had to shut down the contest. What? Because it got so big and chaotic. No way. They ended up relocating everyone to Mercer Playground. That's wild. I know. <laughs> so that kind of unplanned relocation. Yeah really illustrates oh, how right. social media can turn a local gathering right. into something yeah. much bigger, yeah. much faster uh -huh. than anyone could anticipate. Totally. It's like wildfire. I was just thinking that. Right. It's so unpredictable and exciting. It's total chaos, but in the best way possible. Yeah, I love that. Um, so amidst all this chaos, yeah. we have our winner. Okay. His name is Miles Mitchell. Miles Mitchell, all right. And he was dressed as Willy Wonka. Oh, wow. Complete with a purple suit and top hat. Love it. He wins the grand prize, yeah. which was a whole fifty dollars. Fifty buck. But then, he uses his moment to advocate for Palestine. Oh. That's what I thought. Yeah. So, what do you think about that? This is where it gets really interesting, right? Yes. Because it highlights how even lighthearted events exactly. can become platforms for social commentary. Yeah. It really speaks to this blurring of lines between mm -hmm. entertainment and activism. Totally. Especially for younger generations. I think so, too. It's not just about having fun anymore, right? Right. It's about using your platform, however small, yeah. to speak out about the issues that you care about. And I love that because think about the impact. Yeah. Because of this event and the media attention mm -hmm. that it garnered, yeah. Mitchell's message reached a far wider audience For sure. than it might have otherwise. Of course. It sparks a conversation. Mm -hmm. It raises awareness. Absolutely. And that's powerful. It is really powerful. So we started this deep dive talking about fandom. Yes. And I think this story mm -hmm. really illustrates the potential of fandom, mm -hmm. not just for individual expression, right. mm -hmm. but also for collective action. Absolutely. So as we wrap up, yeah. I want to leave you with this. Okay. What okay. fandoms are you a part of? Ooh, good question. And how do you see the lines between entertainment yeah. and social causes blurring in your own life? Mm -hmm. Something to think about. Thanks for listening, everybody. Thanks for joining me on this deep dive. Really appreciate it. And we'll see you next time. See you then.